are uh, redoing some of the wiring in here. Uh, actually, we have some replacement speakers that we're putting in. Uh, there was some damage done to this cabinet when someone else was working on it, and I'm going to tell you essentially what we can see has occurred. And this is just a pro tip for any of you guys that have a Marshall 412 that you're taking apart, or for that matter, a lot of 412s that have the backs coming off. But in particular, I've noticed it with Marshall, is the cable that they have here, uh, right there, is relatively short. Look at the distance. It's only coming out about this much, you know, only about that much from the uh, actual back of the cabinet. So when the backboard, which is here, comes off, here's the tricky part. Don't take it too far off. Just when you loosen it up and you're starting to take it out, just, just go a few inches, take a look inside, okay? And what unfortunately happens is a lot of guys will take it and just yank it like this. And then what happens is this cable here gets pulled. And right in here, you'll see that these are just small little tabs um, right on where the speakers are. Uh, this, this part of it here is actually paper. Uh, like, a, like a cardboard style of, of, of paper. So this here, this wire can get yanked and you can actually damage the speaker uh, if you're taking this uh, board off too hard and too quickly. So anytime you're taking, taking apart uh, a backboard off of the cabinet, take your time, bring it off nice and slow, look inside, see how long the length of the cable is. Uh, just a bit of a modification that we've done with this uh, most of the time, Marshall 412s will have the jack here at the bottom, okay? What we've done is put it at the top. The reason for that is if someone's walking around the back of a cabinet while it's on the ground, they can kick the jack. It's a, a quarter inch jack like that that gets, uh, that gets plugged into the back. And so we don't, want to, we don't want it to be in the bottom where it can get kicked. If this was even used in a 412 stack for that matter, uh, speaker cables are always long enough to easily be able to reach from one speaker cabinet to the other. Uh, in this case, when we put the jack right up on top, less of a chance of it getting knocked around. So uh, that's essentially it. Last thing I will say, when you are taking this cabinet apart, make sure you get a jar or a cup or something and you very carefully keep track of all the screws. A lot of screws that are in here like uh, in the T-nuts that are holding the handles in here. Uh, and I'll tell you the thread on them, just in case you lose it, is called a 1032 thread. Uh, and it's just a regular machine type of screw that goes into it with those T-nuts. Uh, and it's the same with the T-nuts that are holding this uh, grill on. If you lose one of the screws that holds the speaker on, keep in mind that your replacement screw cannot be longer than one inch. Otherwise, if you put a screw through there, it's going to pop out on the other side through the grill. Uh, I'll just show you real quick the grill that we put on here. Uh, it's not the standard Marshall grill. It's uh, a nice uh, black cloth grill. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, with the Marshall, I guess it depends if you want to have that original vintage look. Uh, it's pretty difficult to do it because the uh, material, the cloth material on it rips up pretty quick. This is a neat idea what this guy has done or someone's done at one point. They ripped the cloth off and they just finished it with a, a verithane uh, coat, a uh, verithane lacquer of some kind. And here they're putting a nice uh, grill on it. It's uh, retaining its original tone. Uh, it's, it's a really cool cab. you know. Uh, uh, even though we manufacture other speaker cabinets ourselves, we, we have a lot of respect for uh, the Marshall 412. Uh, nice sounding unit. And uh, there you got it. So hopefully that's helping you with uh, taking your caps apart in the future. Take care.